shrouded in legend. Far from the monster of our childhood fairy tales, the wolf is a creature more complex than many humans realize. Sometimes described in words we use for ourselves, wolves are intimate, affectionate, even joyful. Join us now as we enter the world of the wolf and rediscover a legend. In Native American legend, the children of the earth were the animals, and the child known as Big Mouth howled in the forest and sent spirit messages to a world beyond. Today we understand the science of wolves, but to many their soul has been lost. Once cunning hunter has become prey to humans. A magnificent and revered creature is now for many considered as vermin. And what was once a voice to the spirit world now seems a mournful farewell to the land from which wolves have been cast. Wolves live in our imaginations as shadows of evil, obscured by fallacy and fiction. Will they forever remain in our subconscious? Or someday emerge into the light of our understanding? In the remote backcountry of Idaho's Sawtooth Mountains, an extraordinary project is about to begin. A wolf is being transported by air to lands where its ancestors once roamed free. Yeah, we're about five minutes away. The three-year-old male has been anesthetized for the trip. He is to be part of a study on the social nature of wolves an effort to understand the behavior of this endangered species. A female has already made her home on 20 acres of enclosed land leased to the project by the U.S. Forest Service. A team of naturalists and filmmakers hope to establish over the next three years a captive pack in an environment unparalleled anywhere in the world. Okay, now, let me get that game. Yeah. Watch your steps there. Wolves are almost impossible to observe in the wild, and a chance to study them close up could unlock clues to their complex social language.
Wolf biologist Mike Jimenez is the group's scientific advisor and will examine each study wolf. It'd be good to run it in the lab, in the lab for um, this part of the lab. Filmmaker Jim Dutcher has organized the project and hopes to document on film the behavior that they observe. Once the data is collected, yeah, Dutcher and researcher Karen McCall will leave the wolves largely undisturbed in the huge enclosure. The female, named Makui, cautiously approaches Akai, her new mate. It is hoped that these two adults will become the alpha pair, the leaders of their own pack. Within the tent that he and Karen will call home for the coming months and years, Dutcher is raising a litter of three-week-old gray wolf pups. Time for lunch. Who's first? Everybody's first? Yeah, you're first. <laughs> well, hold on now. Like the surrogate parents they will join, these pups were bred in captivity. Most wolves fear humans, and without this early bonding, the pups would remain shy and elusive. The young wolves must be nursed around the clock. Unless both human and wolf create close ties at this early stage, Dutcher would not be able to observe the intimate behavior of their adult lives. By five weeks of age, the pups are allowed to roam through a separate enclosure. Ranging from black to gray, wild wolf pups average five to a litter and are born deep within an underground den. As they gain physical agility and strength, they also develop social skills and emotional bonds. Communication and allegiance to one another will ensure their survival. Pops gain about three pounds a week for the first 14 weeks. Though in the wild, 60% are lost to disease and starvation. The adult male Akai makes his presence known. It has taken four months to completely socialize the growing pups, and now it is time to place them with the adults. Here. At first, Akai seems agitated. And the adults are sniffing the fence already. And though Dutcher is concerned for the pup's safety, an enthusiastic greeting seems to ease all fears.
they will leave their foster parents and venture into a new world with a new family, their pack. And though Akai seems at ease with the new pack members, Makui, the female, turns and bolts for the far end of the enclosure. As alpha male, Akai tours the pups through his domain and firmly begins to establish his position as leader. Strangely, Makui keeps her distance from the new arrivals. A roadkill deer has been brought in by Dutcher, and he and Mike Jimenez will observe the early dynamics of pack hierarchy. Boy, I'll say. Though Akai is clearly dominant, he instinctively allows the pups to feed first. Their subordinate behavior shows acceptance of his authority. Each pup vies for a position on the carcass. You're, you're really seeing this pack dynamics develop. These dominance battles help to create a system of order essential for a healthy pack. This black wolf, I think that's the Omega. And, uh -huh. um, yeah, and it's just, just amazing. It's I, not acting like it, yeah. I see no, isn't there something? Yeah. yeah. Perhaps disturbed by the many wolves, the adult female retreats further into the forest and will remain alone for many months to come. And in the lower meadows, those known as the Sawtooth Pack begin to learn the ways of the wolf in a place where someday their kind may roam free. ABC's World of Discovery, Wolf, Return of a Legend, brought to you by the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was, and more. Ford announces the news truck buyers have been waiting for. The best lease ever on Ford F-Series pickups. Now you can lease America's number one pickup, Ford F-Series, for $229 per month for 24 months, but only for a limited time. These trucks are loaded with features, including driver's side airbag, V8 engine, automatic transmission, air conditioning, and the XLT package. Get the best of terms on the best-selling trucks in America. Drive home this loaded F-Series XLT for $229 per month. Hurry, this offer ends January 3rd, 1994. See your Ford dealer now. <laughs> I'm on my deathbed here. Why not take Dayquil? But my head is pounding. <laughs> I can't stop coughing. Take Dayquil. Won't this stuff fix all that? No, that won't do anything for your headache or your cough. Take the Dayquil. From the makers of NyQuil, Vicks Dayquil Liquid Caps, complete non-drowsy cold relief. Don't you hate it when she's right? Vicks Dayquil Liquid Caps, the non-drowsy stuffy head congested chest, sore throat, coughing fever, so you can face your day medicine. Also try new Dayquil sinus formulas. So this is a fireman's holiday, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, vac family vacation. Vacation, uh-huh. Okay. And uh, you use, uh, you say you use Duracell batteries in your flashlight at the firehouse? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cop and no tell. kind of depend on that, like you depend on your buddies at work. And, and the battery's always there yeah. when I need it, whether I'm crawling through a, a hallway of a burning building, yeah. looking for kids, or whether I'm playing with my own kids right here yeah. in the woods. Ever figure out why Duracell batteries last so long? They take energy from little kids and they put it into their batteries. <laughs> Duracell. No other battery lasts longer. Batteries that don't take a nap. There are many, many 
infants and young children who suffer from malnutrition. Children underweight, uh, possibly undersized. In this country, there's just no excuse for that kind of tragedy. We're grateful for American Express card members' support. Every time they use the card, they're not just going to be buying a meal or an airline ticket or an appliance or a CD player or what have you. They're going to be buying a little piece of the fight against hunger. You can help. Use the American Express card to join the charge against hunger till December 31st. Red Lobster is perfect for lunch. Now with our $4.99 special. Golden fried shrimp and grilled chicken breast plus potato and salad just $4.99. So hurry. To Red Lobster for lunch every day, Sunday too. Hey, how about some office supplies for Christmas? Sears has what every office needs. Lots of professional-looking dress shirts at only $10.99 each. Hurry, while supplies last. Bring the softer side of Sears home for the holidays. The holidays are heating up. Ew, melted my cheese. With a touch of togetherness on TGIF. First, it's family matter. I'm gonna woo you like no one's been wooed since the dawn of Wooga. Followed by Boy Meets World. No, don't hug me! It's the start of a hot holiday weekend on TGIF. To humans, it may look violent, but the ritualistic fighting that occurs among wolves is part of a complex social language. Teeth are bared as a threat intended to deter a subordinate. This behavior may have given rise to our negative image of wolves, an impression that has lasted for centuries. During Europe's Black Plague, Wolves were said to exhume corpses from shallow graves. At a time when some cultures were celebrating the wolf, Europeans developed their own ideas. In 1697, Little Red Riding Hood was published in France, perhaps the most savage indictment of an animal in all of children's literature. The wolf devours the grandmother and then dons her nightgown to snare the young girl. Horrifying images, the stuff of nightmares, yet merely part of an intricate behavior by a member of a highly organized society. Who eats first is critical to the survival of the fittest, and therefore to the pack. And what at one moment may seem like a vicious beast, can at the next appear as gentle as a child's toy. The myths moved west. When Europeans came to America, they brought with them notions of a wicked, bloodthirsty demon. An evil presence that had to be destroyed. These convictions were so widely held that the U.S. government soon began to support them. The numbers are staggering. Between 1850 and 1900, an estimated one and a half million wolves were killed. In 1907, after continued complaints from angry ranchers, the government called for the complete extermination of the species. vehement hatred continued through the 1960s. Poisoned, shot, and tortured, wolves were nearly annihilated in the lower 48 states. After millions of years as part of the natural order,
they were pressed to the verge of extinction in less than a hundred. Today, gray wolves are listed as an endangered species. They now live in Canada, Alaska, and Minnesota, with perhaps only 90 wolves in four western states. But some wolves are coming back, moving south from Canada. Most attempts end in death. It is September. A cool breeze proves that the brief summer is gone. The pups in the enclosure have grown quickly and begin to take on their heavy coats. In the months ahead, Winter in these mountains will be harsh. Ambassadors for their kind the sawtooth pack is held in a microcosm of wilderness. And yet, they speak even now to that spirit world of nature. The pack is protected here, amid the forests. Perhaps it is we, humans, that live behind the fence. The snow will soon be five feet deep and temperatures can drop to minus 30 degrees. Wolves are well adapted to cold weather and their bonds to one another become even stronger as they depend on each other for food. The small town of Stanley, Idaho, sits at the edge of wilderness. From this base, Dutcher and crew resupply camp each week. Everything from food to film gear is transported in. Today, the cargo is an elk, accidentally killed on the highway. The undertaking requires a tireless sense of commitment. Month after month, through all kinds of weather, the pack must be cared for. By the time the project is complete, this trip will have been made by jeep, snowmobile and foot more than 500 times.
The six wolves of the sawtooth pack consume about 700 pounds of deer and elk meat a month. The pack is first locked off in a separate area so that the dead elk can be safely placed in the enclosure. The lone female keeps her distance. For months, Makui has remained at the far end of the enclosure. Dutcher's plan is to let her eat first. For some unknown reason, she has chosen not to become part of the sawtooth pack. To these pups, she is a stranger. Jim, the wolves are getting kind of upset down here. They're fighting a lot. Do you think I can let them go? Hold on. I still want to feed Makui. Without Jim's help, Makui would starve. The pack would not allow her to eat. We weren't sure what was going on. Makui hadn't made an effort to bond with the pups when they were small, but we didn't know why. Makui just took an elk leg. have an evolutionary responsibility. They and their prey have evolved together. It is the presence of the wolf, not its absence, that makes deer swift and strong. Dominance and hierarchy dictate who will eat first. A dark female named Mataki has taken the role of Omega, lowest in the pack. The others feast while she waits her turn. like other highly intelligent mammals, spend time playing with each other and with objects. The sawtooth pack finds Karen and her gear irresistible. signal to assemble the pack. But Makui, so far removed, makes no effort to respond. Teachers inspire dreams, shape lives, and give us hope for the future. Yet too often their contributions go unnoticed. There are over two million teachers in America, but not even the best get the recognition they deserve. That's why State Farm started the Good Neighbor Award for teachers. To tell them, we appreciate what you're doing for our children. Listen, it's a credit card. It does not make you a superhero. Actually, maybe it does. I mean, no card is more accepted on the planet, so you can use it for practically anything, like plane tickets. So you could fly like a superhero, 
or at the hospital so you'd have x-ray vision. And you can use it to get cash at ATMs all over. So in any situation, you can just say, stand back, I'll handle this. So maybe MasterCard could make you a superhero. All you need now is a secret identity. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. It's about an hour, each way. But somehow in my Taurus, I don't mind. I've never liked storms. Now I don't really notice them much. It seems like everything's getting more streamlined. Wish I could say the same for myself. For so many people, for so many reasons, Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America. ABC's World of Discovery will continue in a moment. She lives each day knowing it may be her last. She comforts the family or friends she's already lost. She just kind of let her know that she remembered. And at eight years old, she may be the most courageous child you'll ever meet. Idea Story 2020, Friday. She knew him from his books. He remembered her from her letters. But when they finally met... Where men have intellect, women have soul. Are you trying to be offensive or just merely stupid? She was like no one he had ever known. I care more for her than for anyone else in this world. Anthony Hopkins, Deborah Winger, Shadowlands, based on a true story, rated PG. Starts Wednesday at the AMC Santa Monica and Fine Arts. Champagne's not Corbell. Corbell, for people who know champagne. It'll be a white Christmas coast to coast, the story at 11. Yellowstone National Park is one of the nation's most complete ecosystems. With every native species present, except the wolf. More than 30,000 elk live here. But wolves have been completely eradicated. Now there is a movement to reintroduce them. But for ranchers with land nearby, the idea of wolves returning to Yellowstone is unsettling. Joe Helley makes his living on a ranch near the park. If we were to have uh, wolves in, uh, in Yellowstone Park, uh, there's no doubt that, that they would come up here on our range up here. I think everybody realizes that they would venture out into livestock areas such as these. But this isn't wilderness. The wolf wouldn't fit into this country. He was here maybe 80 years ago. He hasn't been here since. There's no room for the wolf in, in this area. The other concern that we have with the wolf coming into an area like this is that he carries the Protection of the Endangered Species Act with him if he comes here. And that's just not acceptable. Wolves are now protected by law, whether on or off ranch lands, compelling some ranchers to shoot, shovel, and shut up. Public hearings about wolf reintroduction voice both sides of a heated issue. It's not a long fight without it. I think we ought to continue. The sportsmen are not interested in exchanging any of our big game animals for a bunch of timber wolves. But a good share of the hunters in southwestern Montana, at least, are going to shoot every timber wolf that they have the opportunity to do so. Cows are a life-enhancing species, not a life-destroying species. I just want everyone to know what a valuable resource you're going to be throwing to the wolves. Also, my son has something to say. I don't want any wolf to kill a person or animal or don't want a wolf to live. Thank you. We Montanans who love wildlife don't want to see the hazardous waste species the gray wolf reintroduced. You say reintroduces a wolf, he's here. He's been my neighbor and I know he's there. But he won't come out. If he comes out, 
the cattleman, the farmer, the sheep herder, for blowing away because it's so important for the predatory animal called man to kill something, no matter what it is. Wolves do kill livestock, but it is their reputation that precedes them. Hank Fisher is the Northern Rockies representative for the Defenders of Wildlife. We don't have people in the West who have ever lived with wolves. And so all they've lived with is stories about wolves. And, uh, and those things really die hard. And if you're a rancher, you look at it from the standpoint of what's in it for me. There is some evidence that both sides may be coming together. Defenders of Wildlife has established a fund to compensate ranchers for cattle loss to wolf predation. And there is a growing attitude among many, like Piero Piva, who take a broad-minded approach to the presence of wolves on their land. I've done some thinking about how I feel about wolves, and I know that if I saw one and I had a rifle and was within shooting range, I'd probably just stand there and watch him. I, I'm, I'm sure that I wouldn't shoot one. It was an individual, and he's not bothering me. Today, wolves have become the symbol of a changing West, the focal point of attention in the ongoing debate over the best use of public lands. <laughs> Perhaps the best place to reintroduce the wolf is in the minds of the young. The Wolf Ambassador Program was developed by National Wildlife Federation biologist Pat Tucker. And you're going to get to see what she looks like, but first... She travels throughout the West with a hands-on approach that challenges children as well as adults to examine old myths and draw their own conclusions. That's what a wolf pack is, okay? It's a family of wolves, it's a mother and a father, and then it's their kid. Some of the kids are older, some of them have been born one year, and some of them have been born another year. The high point of her talk is always the introduction of Kawani, a two-and-a-half-year-old gray wolf. Yeah, she's kind of tired because she's had a long trip yesterday. She drove for a long ways, and she's a little nervous in cars, but she, you guys are being real good. Raised from a puppy, Kawani was recruited because of her outgoing personality. Good girl. See, that's one of the differences between a wolf and a dog. The dog is a pet. She's a wild animal. She's not a pet. Okay, one of the reasons that a wolf doesn't make a good pet is because you can never teach them that to come when you call. You can't have them in the house. They have to have big, special fencing. And another thing is wolves are kind of scared of things. Always at opposite ends of the leash, Kawani and Pat Tucker have traveled thousands of miles together, stressing the wildness of wolves and their social similarities to the human family. The wolf played a major role in the lives of the Cheyenne, Sioux and Pawnee. More than just a hunter, the wolf was revered as both a loyal member of its pack and a strong individual. Two traits that earned it their highest respect. Individuals are in fact what make up the sawtooth pack. The Omega female though subordinate to all, is the instigator of play. She seems to inspire in others the capacity to set aside hierarchy. the Native American stories, there are few about lone wolves.
Makui has remained at a distance for too long, and Jim is determined to find out why. At first, she remained elusive. But after weeks of observation and care, it is Jim that she begins to trust. I went out every day. She seemed desperate for friendship. I still wasn't sure what her problem was. But one day I noticed that she seemed to have some difficulty in seeing. After a closer look, Jim observes that her eyes appear clouded. She seems nearly blind. A wound on her hip is proof that she has been bitten. These clues strongly suggest that impaired vision has caused her fear of the pack and has kept her from bonding with them. Now, as an outsider, she is attacked whenever she appears. In the wild, she would starve. And here, she will never be able to join the pack. But with surgery, her vision might at least be restored. As in all studies where humans and animals come together, moral questions are often raised. The burden of intervention is a heavy one. Is it best to do nothing? Or instead, impose our modern medicine in the hopes of helping a kindred spirit? If you are watching your money closely, you'll like what you see in the new Ford Escort. You'll like the fact that it's priced thousands less than the leading imports. That it has a level of quality that helps bring it more repeat buyers than any other small car. And the fact that you can get any one of these highly equipped Escorts for the same low price. Ford Escort. When it comes to quality and value, it's right on the money. If you have problems falling asleep, now your world is about to change. Introducing Unisom Sleep Gels with a special liquid center. They're maximum strength, so they're as effective as anything you can get without a prescription. They help you fall asleep fast and wake up refreshed. If you have problems falling asleep, try new maximum strength Unisom Sleep Gels. A remarkable new idea from Unisom. Last year, over a million and a half cars ended up just like this one. The thing is, the thieves who stole those cars robbed everybody who pays car insurance premiums. That's why State Farm works with car makers to make new cars harder to steal. And why we work with the police to recover cars that are stolen. Because when a thief steals any car, he steals from all of us. We asked women who clean with bleach, what's under your sink? Bleach, something to cut grease, bathroom cleaner, bleach, tile spray, something to clean grout, and of course bleach. If bleach is so great, what's with that other stuff? Hmm, well, um... Introducing new Comet Liquid Gel, the Bleach Plus Cleaner with Chlorinol. Comet Gel removes stains like bleach does, plus it wipes out the grease and soap scum bleach can't handle. That's really something. New Comet Liquid Gel, when others can't cut it, Comet can. 
Christmas weekend, curl up with two movie classics. First, a little girl seeks the answer to that age-old question. Dear editor, is there a Santa Claus? Charles Bronson, Ed Asner, and Richard Thomas in Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus Saturday. Then, it's Newman and Redford in one of the biggest blockbusters ever. You owe me 15 grand, pal. Winner of seven Academy Awards, The Sting, Sunday. How does it do it? It cheats. A classic Christmas weekend. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus Saturday and the Sting Sunday. It is decided that McCoo's surgery should take place. Dr. Grant Maurer, a veterinary ophthalmologist, has made the trip to camp. And along with Dr. Randy Aker, will perform the operation. McCooey food. To reduce the amount of trauma she will endure, the crew avoids transporting her into town. The tent will serve as the operating room. More bite wounds are found under her coat. They are extensive and must be repaired first. Dr. Maurer has never performed this surgery on a wolf before. She gets that out of there, she's going to see a lot more. Because it's completely blind. The diagnosis? She'll Cataracts. So, so it's from the other eye that she's seeing. Seeing, yeah, her left eye that she's seeing. I'm just hoping it'll open up for us. He will first remove the damaged lens and then replace it with one that is synthetic. Hopefully, this procedure will completely restore her vision. There we go. That's right. Two months later, Makui has recovered. She is placed in a separate enclosure, and though she can never return to the sawtooth pack, her days of lonely isolation are over. It is spring again, and Dutcher has begun to raise a new litter of pups. One of these will live with the gentle Makui in the hope that it will ease her loneliness. In the enclosure, as a part of nature, many of her rules still apply. Tragedy would soon strike the sawtooth pack, and they will lose a vital member. Motaki, the Omega, the instigator of play, the one who waited quietly to eat. 
the pack will forever miss the spirit of her joy. One June morning, Karen and Jim find her dead. The way in which she died and claw marks on a tree suggest that a wild cougar scaled the fence. How it happened will never be clear, but the impact her death has on the pack is undeniable. Dutcher would write in his journal, July 30th, the pack still suffers Mataki's loss. There is no play today. They have not played in six weeks. There's a little marshy here. Let me help you out. That's good. All right. Here you go. With filming nearly yourself? complete, okay, Jim Dutcher and Karen McCall okay. will turn their attentions toward a new venture. They have founded the Wolf Education and Research Center. The nonprofit foundation will give students of all ages a chance to experience firsthand the power and majesty of wolves in a wild setting. Understanding the importance of a healthy ecosystem and the critical role played by this endangered species is the goal of the center. Under the watchful eye of adults within the enclosure, early visitors meet the future members of the Sawtooth Pack. I just love you. And on both sides, the encounter will not soon be forgotten. What began as a study of wolf behavior has unlocked for Jim Dutcher more than he could imagine. As psychologist Conrad Lorenz wrote, the quickest way to learn the language of a species is to do so as a social partner. And with a new generation of the sawtooth pack come the bonds that begin again and a spirit comes alive. These ambassadors to wildness live here in a way not unlike their relatives in the wild. In forests, where they dance and play, and on meadows where parents teach their young. Although myths continue to outlive the wolf, many now understand its nature. grant them space on the lands where they once roamed, and so give to ourselves the honor of their long-missed presence. Is the cry of the wolf still heard as a mournful farewell? Or instead, do they now announce their return?
accidents can happen anytime, and they happen that fast. Trouble is, if you drive after drinking, you can't react that fast. I've handled enough claims to know.